All right, so this is part two of the partial fraction decomposition. The first video I talked about when your denominator had linear factors in it. So now we're going to talk about this situation, where we have a linear factor, x minus 2, but it's repeated. Okay? This is called um, repeated linear factors. Okay, we don't get to just go, well, that's x minus 2 and x minus 2, so you have a over x minus 2 plus b over x minus 2. It's not quite that simple, and the reason why is, well, think about it. If you just had the stuff in blue over here, what would be the least common denominator? Well, it would be x minus 2, right? You would just have a plus b over x minus 2. Well, how would you ever get x minus 2 squared in the denominator? It would never happen, right? Okay, so that's why it's just it's not quite that simple. What we need actually is a fraction for all the possible denominators that could give us the x minus two squared. Well, x minus two can be changed to an x minus two squared, and x minus two squared is also a situation where your denominator can be x minus two squared. So let's say you had x minus two cubed. Right, then you would have to have one fraction for just x minus 2, one fraction for x minus 2 squared, because x minus 2 squared is a factor of x minus 2 cubed, and then you'd have to have a plus c over x minus 2 cubed. You need to have all those possible denominators, because all those possible denominators can be changed into the x minus 2 cubed situation. So now we go through the same process we had before. LCD would be x minus 2 squared. Right, so multiply the left side by that, and you just get 3x. Multiply the right side by that, and you've got to multiply this first fraction. One of the x minus 2's goes away, and just leaves you a times x minus 2. And then plus, multiply times the second fraction, it all goes away, and you're just left with b. Everybody see that? All right, so then distribute your a through, and you get 3x equals ax minus 2a plus b and then do your equating coefficients. So the coefficient for x on the right side is a, the coefficient for x on the left side is 3, so a has to equal 3. And then the constant term on the right side is all of this. It's negative 2a plus b, all of that, and don't forget it's negative 2a. And that has to equal the constant term on the left side, which is, well, there's nothing there, so it's 0. All right, and these two things, so if a equals 3 and negative 2a plus b equals 0, that implies that b has to equal what? Has to equal 6. And so then the partial fraction decomposition would be uh, 3 over x minus 2 plus 6 over x minus 2 squared. If you take those two fractions and add them up, you will get our original fraction back. One reason we use partial fraction decomposition is because uh, uh, it's in calculus, for example. So doing whatever calculus technique you're dealing with at that time, it might be difficult to do it on this individual first fraction that we have, but if we could rewrite the fraction as a series of simpler fractions, then the calculus on the simpler fractions um, might be easier to do, and so that would be a, a, a good reason to change it, so you could do the actually do the calculus on it. Okay, that's with repeated linear factors. So everybody with me? If you have repeated linear factors, then you have to have all these individual fractions with the denominator being re obviously repeated. All right, so then the last one I want to talk about is called, um, when you have a denominator like this, where you have x squared plus 2. All right, so we have x plus 1, that's a linear factor, but this x squared plus 2, that's called a quadratic factor. So these, this scenario is going to deal with quadratic factors. For the linear factor, it's the same thing we've been doing. You'd have a over x plus 1. And really what we've been doing this whole time is writing an expression on the numerator that's one degree less than the expression on the denominator. Well, our expressions on the denominator have been linear expressions. So that's why we've just had like a up here. Right? But now we're going to change this, and we've got this quadratic expression on the bottom, x squared plus 2. Right? So the expression we need up here in the numerator needs to be one degree less than the expression we down, have down here in the denominator. Well, that means we need a linear expression up here, right? which means we're going to have bx plus 
C, you need the entire expression. All right, so we didn't have that over here because it was just going to be a constant term that was up uh, in the numerator here because your expression in the denominator is linear. But over here, uh, it's the entire linear expression, bx plus c. Let's say this was x cubed plus 2. Then you would actually need to have bx squared plus cx plus d. You need a quadratic, a generic quadratic expression in the numerator, um, and so forth and so on. All right, so that's the idea for um, when you're when your factors are not linear, uh, then you have to compensate for the numerator being one degree less. All right, everything else stays exactly the same. I mean, nothing else changes. You say, all right, my LCD is x plus 1 times x squared plus 2. Multiply both sides by that. You're going to get 2x plus 1 on the left. You're going to get a times x squared plus 2 plus bx plus c times x plus 1. Everybody see that? If you multiply the LCD times this fraction, the x squared plus 2 goes away. Left with bx plus c times x plus 1. And then you got a bit of algebra to do, but that's okay. So you have 2x plus 1 equals ax squared plus 2a. And then we're going to have to foil this out. So we're going to have bx squared plus bx plus cx plus c when you multiply that out. All right, and then group like terms on the right side there. So ax squared and bx squared we can group together and factor the x squared out and you'd have a plus b times x squared and then plus uh, we have b and c here so b plus c times x and then what 2a plus c? 2a plus c. All right, then equate coefficients. So the coefficient for x squared on the right side is a plus b. Coefficient for x squared on the left side is 0. So a plus b has to equal 0. All right, coefficient for x's. So b plus c has to equal 2. Coefficient for x on the right has to equal coefficient for x on the left. And then the constant term, 2a plus c has to equal the constant term on the left, which is 1. And so you have a system of three equations with three unknowns. Uh, I think the way I would do this would be to plop that in the calculator and do reduced row echelon form. All right? I don't care how you solve it. I'm going to leave that up to you, because I expect you guys to know how to solve a system of three equations with three unknowns now. So your solutions for a, b, and c here, though, would be a is negative one-third, b is one-third, and c is five-thirds. Right? So when you solve the system, these are the numbers you should get for a, b, and c. So that means that we have a, which would be, let's put a so, negative one-third over x plus one, plus b would be one-third x plus c five-thirds all over x squared plus two and then make that look nicer. All right, these are complex fractions so we can multiply top and bottom here by three, three over three and multiply this two th by three over three. So when you do that you're going to get negative one over three times x plus one plus x plus 5 over 3 times x squared plus 2. And that is your partial fraction decomposition. If you were to take these two fractions and add them up, you'd get back to this original fraction that we had. All right, so that's the idea on partial fractions. Uh, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.